Hi, my name is Mark Johnston and I do STEM education. I'm excited to bring a brand new VEX VR Playground vi tutorial video for you today. Uh, it's called Hidden Pixel Art. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. We're gonna learn about the console and how to use the print command to print out some interesting stuff into the console. So stick around and let's get started. The Guidance subsystem uses deviations to generate corrective commands to drive the missile from a position where it is to a position where it isn't. And arriving at a position where it wasn't, it now is. All right, here we are at vr.vex.com. And let's go ahead and open the playground so that we can see the new playground here that has just added. It's called Hidden Pixel Art. Now when I open it, it doesn't look like that much, right? It doesn't look that impressive. Um, just looks like a big square. But what you need to see here is that you, you actually have a canopy over top. It's like a roof, okay? So it's like we're in a drone looking down at a house and we see the roof and there's stuff underneath, okay? Um, so the stuff underneath is it's an eight by eight grid. So eight squares and each of these squares here on the side will guide us. It's an eight by eight grid. And in each of those boxes is either a green or a blue color. And that's going to give us a hidden pixel picture or it's hidden right now, but we want to expose it and show that picture. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the information that we get from that pixel. Each one of these blocks is a pixel. So this is a basically an eight by eight picture, uh, eight pixels by eight pixels. And we're going to print those into the monitor here down in the bottom right in the console. Okay. And so real simple, if we haven't used the console before, it's, it's very, very simple. If you say print hello, and then you say run, it will print that into the console. Now, if I run it again, I'll have to push stop and then watch what happens if I run it again, it prints hello right again. So you have to tell it pretty much everything you want. If you wanted it to have a space after each word, you have to put in a space. Um, if you want it to go to the next line, you have to say set cursor to next row. Now you do have some manual controls here. Uh, I'm kind of in the way, so I'll just see if you can see it. It's uh, clear, right? You can save it as well, right here. And as well as you can copy it to the clipboard, okay? So you do have those uh, options. And so if you want to, whatever you get uh, printed out into the console area, if you wanted to save it, paste it into like a, a Google Doc or something, you can do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click clear right now. So I clear out the console for when I uh, do this next thing. But I don't wanna have to do that every time. So I know I'm gonna be using the console and every time I run my program, I want it to clear. So I'll drag the clear all rows tab there and so now, Whatever I do, if I say print hello and you know I run that, it'll the console will say hello and say I come in here and I want to do a space in between each one and then I push stop and then it's going to clear out what was there and replace it with whatever I wanted up here, okay? Also something of note is that it will each character takes up the same amount of space. Now that's actually pretty important, right? Because even if I did like say uh, L's, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. If I did five L's and then let's take the spaces out of here and hello is five, right? Those L's look a lot smaller, don't they? Let's do a space in between them. So I'll set cursor to next row. Now I'll go ahead and stop and start again. Notice that even though the letter L's are 
kind of a smaller letter than like the capital H, they take up the exact same amount of space. So that's good um, for what we want to do. So let's say that I wanted to do a little pixel art here, okay? Uh, how about I just do a square or just a box? I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How about ten dashes like that? And then I'll do the pipe. That's like the shift and then the other backslash. And then, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, did I get a period there? Oh, it's my Mac being funny. Okay, so there's a pipe and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll do that. Okay, now I need to set to a new row and a new row and then I will do one more and then in here I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let's see what that looks like. I'm going to clear the console just to, as a force of habit there. I'll push play. And then look at that. Now I do have some spacing issues going on here. So probably want to double check here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I do have ten there. What did I do here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah. I got too many spaces. So I duplicated that across everything and that's why my image looks a little bit strange. All right, I'll go ahead and start again. And there we go. Okay, so you can see there I have a box, right? So my robot is going to traverse the whole map and the map is going to give information about what to print onto the console that'll show me the picture, all right? This is a lot of fun. It's so much fun um, <laughs> to do, and uh, especially when you see all of these different maps. Check this out. When you click the little location tab right here, button, you have, look at these, 10 different options, 10 different uh, hidden images. And you, you can get some help. Once your robot has traversed the whole thing, you can click the magic wand to see the answer, to reveal what is beneath that canopy, what's, what's beneath that roof, okay? So you do gotta do a little bit of work in order to, to get that payoff, all right? The, the thing that I'm gonna do is looking at the console, the console prints from left to right and from top to bottom. So that's how I'm gonna get my robot to drive across this map. I'm gonna get it to go all the way up here into the top left and I'm gonna go from left to right and then I'm gonna go down to the next line and go left to right. And so also let's say the next line, let's talk about this like it's a table, okay? So it's columns and rows. So I'm gonna do the first row and I'm going to get information for each of the eight columns. I'm gonna do the next row and so on all the way to eight rows, all with eight columns. All right, so that's a lot of information. Let's go ahead and see if we can print out that first row. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm gonna get, the first thing I'm gonna do is get my robot where it needs to go. I can look at these boxes and just see that they are 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. And if I need to go eight blocks, eight times 200, would give me 16, so I know it's 1600 millimeters to go forward. And then I'll just turn right for 90. Now I'm ready to go. So my robot will go all the way up here, turn right and be ready to look. Now normally I would push play and we would watch it and we would make sure that that's what it did, but it's gonna be covered by the canopy watch. I'll push play. So it's, it's, it's underneath that roof. We can't see it. We don't know exactly what it's doing, but let me reset that and do it again. Watch this down eye. Look at the color right now. It says none. I'll push play blue, green, blue. Excellent. And so because I've done this before, I'm just going to kind of tell you that that green is like the drawing. Okay. It's like if I had a piece of paper and there's white and black, right? And But I drew on it with a black pen. 
you wouldn't say that part is white and that part is black. You would just say there's the line, right? So the green is the actual pixels that we want, okay? And it's just two different colors, right? So we would call that, for instance, like monochrome black and white. It's either black or it's white. In this case, we're using blue and green, okay? So if we see green, we want to print say let's do an x okay so that it it's you know a letter that shows shows up well and that if it is blue we don't or if it's not green we don't want it to show anything else so if it is this do this if not do that now it's very important that i do print a space when i get to blue because i want it to be lined up correctly so I'm going to take an if else, and then I'm going to go to sensing and get the, notice it says eye sensing, and I want the down eye to detect green. And if the down eye detects green, then I want it to print an X. So I'll go to looks and then print an X. But if it does not see green, I want it to print a space. So I'll just push one space, space bar. Now let's try that. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Uh, let's play and see what happens. I believe that when it got there to the end, it was seeing blue so i think it's just going to do a space so keep an eye over here let's see if you can catch it did you notice that it jumped so it saw blue and it did it printed a space all right now we needed to go to the next square and i know the next square is just 200 millimeters over so i'm going to have it drive forward for 200 millimeters and then i needed to do this exactly over again so I could actually get a repeat under control and then repeat. And I'm going to have it repeat this whole thing eight times. Now we reset and play again. And while it's doing that, I'm just going to pull it down here and I'm going to watch this console at the same time. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, drive velocity and the turn velocity. Oh, look, it printed an X. It's working. I'm going to put the drive velocity and turn velocity at 100% just to get it to go a little bit faster. So now look at that surprise. See where our robot is? It was here, so it repeated it. It read it and then drove forward, and that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it makes sense. Now I need it to do the same thing for the row behind below, right? So I'm going to actually have it just drive in reverse all the way back those eight squares. So there'll be 1600 millimeters. I'll have it turn right. So it'll, now it'll be pointing down. I'll have it drive forward for 200 millimeters and then I'll have it turn left for 90. So it's pointing this way and then it'll be ready to just repeat exactly what it just did. All right, so that was a lot, but let's go ahead and do it, right? So I'm gonna drive in reverse for 1600 millimeters. And then I'm going to turn right for 90 degrees, drive forward for 200, and then turn left for 90 degrees. And then I'm ready to do this whole thing again. Now I'm, so I'm repeating a repeat, right? We've done that before. If you haven't seen my videos on the disc mover, well, we did that a lot in the disc mover. Okay, so I'll repeat. And this eight down here represented the number of columns, right? Because it went drive forward, read, or read and drive forward, read and drive forward, read and then drive forward. Now we can have it go all the way back, go down to the next line, and then go again. So this repeat right here represents the number of rows. So we have 
eight rows. All right, now is the time that you have all been waiting for. Let's refresh, push play, and see what happens. You can see the program running back there. There's an X. Oh, our robot peeks out right there, so we know it's working. Hopefully we see it here in just a second. Oh no, I totally messed up, but that's okay. Do you know what I messed up on? It's hidden right now. You might need to reverse the video just a little bit to check to see what I'm hidden, what, what I'm missing. So I could edit this out, but I thought I would leave it in because this is a common mistake that people make. I make it as well. And that's why you have to test your code and watch and work out the bugs and figure out what's going on. So it's all in one line. Well, what did I say at the beginning? I didn't follow my own advice. I need it to go to the next line. So let me go ahead and click stop. Look, every time it prints the, for the next row, it needs to go to the next line. So I need to set cursor to next row. Once it is done with this row or with this uh, row, right? This does the whole row. This does one row straight across. So this, this does all the columns of that one row. Then I need it to go to the next row. So I could probably do it here or I could do it up here. It would be the same thing if I did it down here or up here. But I'm gonna do it there to kinda, now th th that means it will do a space in the first row, which is pretty good. I think that works. So I'll go ahead and click play. And now is the time you've all been waiting for. Oh, I forgot to reset, so my robot was in the wrong spot. I'm full of surprises today. All right, here we go. Cross your fingers, this one should work. Notice it jumped down. So it jumped down one row, which is fine. I think it's working this time. Notice where how they're lined up, and they're starting to create a picture. There we go. We have a an arrow pointing off to the side. That's so cool. Um, guys, there's uh, so many things you could do. You could change the color. You could add spaces. You could even build your own picture frame that goes around the picture. See if you could figure that one out, right? And look it. The mag magic wand is now available. Let's go ahead and click on the magic wand. And that's it. That's what we're seeing. So very cool lots of fun uh, this program will work on all of these other uh, ones like for instance J if I push play on that it will reveal that picture but you know what I don't know if I want to spoil it I don't want to spoil it so I encourage you see if you can figure it out and I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. If you like the content that I'm making, I would greatly appreciate it if you would share my videos with others. Uh, thank you so much again for joining me. Have a good one.